it's not going away. It's going to evolve. You know, uh, MySpace was the big thing for three or four years ago. No one pays attention to that. Now it's trying to come back a little bit. You know, maybe Twitter won't last because it's not a revenue generator. Maybe it will. But something else will come next. And that'll just keep going and as long as you stay on top of the trends and a million ways to do that. Like the guy sitting in front of the screen, we have one of that. Right. <laughs> that, uh, that's how it works. You know. What's the age of the guy who sits in front of the screen and the, uh, the woman that you mentioned? Abby's, how old is Abby? 24? 25. 25. Like 20. Yeah, I think I just turned 25. Because um, I'm with the Community College of Baltimore County, and I'm finding from our teachers that you can't send emails to our students. You can text them. Right. They don't, they don't pay any attention to emails anymore. They want to text. And they're younger, some of those. Wow. And, uh, so I, mean, I don't even know how to react to that. <laughs> wow. I'm just going to use emails. Mm. I, I, thought, I, I spend a lot of time in front of screen as well because I'm not a 25 year old guy and I look at it differently and and I bring sorry for the cliche I bring to the table um, a different way of looking at it so you know, 11 o'clock at night I'm in front of the screen too checking out all this stuff and sending emails how does this work what do you think of this I, I think it, I think that different perspective older perspective has great value well I think the other part of this is although uh, if you're not familiar with all this, you tend to dismiss it. As you become familiar with it, you realize um, not only is it not going away and going to evolve, but it is actually, it can be strategic. And so I think our responsibility is to make sense of this for our clients, to explain it to them uh, and to ourselves and our staffs in a way that it, it is strategic. We're not just doing it to do it, but there is a raison d'etre to what we do just as there has been historically and are you know reaching out to other kinds of media. Can, can you all of you take that what you just said the next step? If you do, you know, I have one client, a male who's straight, who I believe has a crush on um, MSNBC Morning Joe. He is just, it has nothing to do with what he does, but he just that's where he wants to be. Um, and any other TV will do, national TV. And I'm trying to convince him of the social media, you know, the value of social media that in fact it may even be more valuable in some ways. So can you talk about the tension between when do you just sort of submit and try to please your client and give them what they want versus push them into this unfamiliar territory, which is uncomfortable, and go get your monthly reports at the end of the month with a bunch of wacky blogs on it and Facebook postings and it doesn't look as good to them as three yeah. New York Times the way, and two PBS News hours. Yeah, the, way, the way we look at it, and when I'm talking to our clients, and, um, and some of them don't fully understand it, but they're starting to hear about it, or the kids tell them about it, and freaking out and all that. <laughs> I mean, I, I tell them, look, social media in and of itself, except in the rare cases like the funky monkey, shouldn't be, I don't think it's a standalone. I think it's part of a larger marketing and public relations plan. It's a good part of it. It should be inst instituted. And it may be a way to show this guy, I'm sure Morning Joe's got Twitter. I'm sure Morning right. Joe has a Facebook page. Maybe that sort of way to convince him. But I, I always put it as, look, this is part of it. We should do it for you. You should be involved. It's another way to reach an audience. You know, maybe it's not the way you're accustomed to. Maybe it's not the end. I don't believe it's the end all and be all. I think it should be a combination of things. But it should be part of it. Part, part of the the convincing is connecting the dots that are not quite so obvious. Um, our craft show client, um, Sugarloaf Craft Festivals, was in Timonium this past weekend. They're there twice a year this past weekend was the show. 25% increase in the number of visitors, which is a big deal for consumer shows. Um, Monday morning, I, we printed out a um, Facebook page and 25 comments and then the percentage of those 25 comments over the weekend of people who said I'm going wish I could go here's what I bought we've got to be much more deliberate in connecting the dots and showing this how social media contributes to the success rather than just assuming that they get it also there are very good case studies or there are good case studies online and there's good secondary research online that really speaks to the value of social media you know, you can argue either side of this. There, there are a number of articles that will tell you how it's meaningless, but there are a greater number of articles that will really provide you with substantive information. And I think one of our increasing, first of all, measurements become, you know, 
when I first started in PR in 1963, nobody even knew the word measurement or did they care about it. And um, you know, gradually measurements become a word that is a challenging word to all of us as well. And you know, everybody's always figuring and trying to figure out what's the holy grail. Nobody's ever figured it out in PR. But there are there are metrics in social media, and that is actually a benefit to us. And so the question is, how do you? We have a responsibility, I think, to look at those metrics, to translate those metrics for a client in order to demonstrate, again, the value of this because, to John's point, a comprehensive PR program today requires that you do the traditional and social media. What the balance is depends on strategically what each of our clients needs. I think the other complicated part of this, and we were dealing with it yesterday, is, you know, what do you charge for it? Because it is extraordinarily time consuming. It is, uh, you know, he's got one guy. We all have people just staring at, you know, at, at screens and monitoring and writing content and blogging and tweeting and yachting. And that's extremely time consuming. And so I think a big issue for our industry going forward for any of you who are in private practice is what do you charge for it? And for those of you who have outside counsel, what are you charged for it? And, uh, and, and that's, you know, yet to be sort of determined across the board with most firms. We, we were asked once to, we, we don't bill hourly and we don't keep timesheets because I don't want to know. It just, it's, it's too we, depressing. We're, 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 right. Right. we're right. all pretty retained as well. We were asked once to keep track of how much time it takes for social media. And we started doing it and it lasted a week and we stopped because, to Sandy's point, it takes so much time, and it's so cumbersome because it's not like sitting down and writing a press release or, or flying to Las Vegas and doing a fan tour. It happens sporadically. It's always happening. For me, it happens at 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. Um, it's really hard to get your arms around. Um, I wouldn't mention something, follow up on something Sandy said about giving clients what they need. I, I realized when I was talking about um, Sugarloaf that I said we printed out the Facebook page and sent it to the client which is just ridiculous. So, uh, that's what the client but needs. That's what they want. He, he, you know, if I were to send him a web address and make him go and tell him where to click, he's never going to see the results. He needs the piece of paper. So we print it out. Put a stamp so, on the envelope. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Our postage budget has gone down a lot. Well, that is true. Yes. Yeah, I know it's you know, relatively still a new frontier compared to print. Um, social media has changed. But have you ever dealt with a client who wants to be a part of social media just because, you know, he's doing it and they're doing it, and they have no real sort of plan or purpose? How do you sort of reel them in or help them become more purposeful? Well, thank thank they're goodness doing? they're out there. Um, <laughs> I, I, I love when they want to do it and they don't really know much about it, um, you know, because they know, they understand it's what we're noticing now. Um, is that a lot of a lot of our clients are understanding they need to be in that universe, but it's scary. It, they don't have time. They don't really get it. Perfect. Uh, we do, and so it's. I think it's it's become that's almost the easiest model from my perspective. Is that they 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 know they need to be there. Um, you can have the conversation with them, and you can manage it. You manage it to, to not form because. Steve just was saying how time consuming it is, and it's true. I mean, if you don't update these things, with Twitter and Facebook and um, all that good stuff, um, several times a day, it's all, don't do it, you know? So, um, I don't know, you guys should. Well, that's, I think that's a key thing. It, it has to be constant. Yep. And again, that, that's where it becomes uh, extraordinarily, extraordinarily time consuming. I, another value that every that people who work for me have found out of all this is actually befriending a key journalists. Yeah. That uh, and I, how many of you have sort of found the same thing that you you begin to establish relationships with journalists through uh, tweeting and Twitter. So then I get it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if you buy the product or if you connect with the journalist, I can I immediately see see the value. But I, I also understand the value of. I'm a great believer, as we all are, I guess, in the value of buzz. And so for clients who understand that there's, there's something to be said for buzz, the, the uh, social media brings that to you. Yeah. 